If you play with the thought of getting a beautiful reef tank but have no idea how to start and want to avoid mistakes, this video is perfect for you because we'll talk about the technical equipment and the first corals and tell you about the costs you have to consider. This video might be especially interesting for you if you only got in touch with freshwater tanks before because there are a few differences we will address. For this video I visited Tim in the German Unterwasser Freiburg store and together we have planned a special kind of project. This tank is supposed to be as sustainable as possible. Meaning that we will include fishes and corals from breeding, especially local breeding. Additionally we try to minimize the costs as much as possible. This is an ordinary 100 to 40 to 40 centimeter tank that you can buy in any regular hardware store. Standard measurements and thin glass. Use a skimmer. I know there are a lot of tanks out there and also here on the channel working without that tool. In my opinion, especially when you are a beginner and you want to keep some fish for example in your aquarium, I would always include a skimmer into my tank. What exactly is a skimmer? Especially important for those who only have fresh water experience. I love to compare it to the self-cleaning process of the ocean. If you are walking on a beach, you can sometimes see big masses of foam on the shore. And the exact same thing happens in a skimmer. Small dirt particulars are bound by air bubbles and rise to the small chamber in the skimmer. But why doesn't that happen in fresh water? because fresh water doesn't foam that much. It has another distensity and viscosity. Here we just take the Tunza Reef Pack, which includes also a little filter. So of course the whole filtration system is wasting a lot of space in our tank. It is always nicer to install everything outside of the tank. In the saltwater aquaristic, this is managed by a sump. The whole filtration system is just located for example under the aquarium in another small tank. For now we wanted to present you the easiest setup which is possible, so this is our solution. But the black wall covers and hides the filtration system quite well. The next chapter is flow, enough flow from day one, because the internal filter does not create enough flow, we need an additional flow pump. Because we are on a budget, we don't use controllable flow pumps here, even if I would recommend those. With controllable flow pumps you can create a wave circulation, but for beginners the Tunza Nano Stream will do. This is another interesting difference between salt water and fresh water tanks. In salt water there are corals that need a lot of flow. Not all of course, but a coral will die of starvation if it would try to catch food with their polyps. I believe one flow pump will do for now. And you should clean your flow pumps every three months because they can lose a lot of power. Now we are talking about an extremely important topic, the lighting. The right illumination is one of the most important things in the saltwater hobby. A stupid saying says, light is life. A proper lamp is key in the saltwater aquaristic. This lamp is a very affordable product for about 100 euros. I'm not quite familiar with it, but it is proper for some easy soft corals and gogonians. But the lamp would be the first thing I would recommend you to upgrade or invest in from beginning. I often get asked if a fresh water lamp can be used on a salt water tank and I would not recommend it, but I know that it works. It works, but it looks like shit. This lamp is even advertised as a salt water lamp and will work for soft corals and some macroalgae. 
Next topic is heating. As you can tell, there is no heater in here. A typical salt water tank runs on 23 to 24 degrees Celsius. I've also seen salt water tanks run on 21 to 22 degrees Celsius because they were stocked with LPS. But 23.5 to 24 degrees Celsius is fine for an ordinary salt water tank. We want to be sustainable, meaning we cannot use live rocks. A small piece could be useful to get the biology started, but you don't need live rocks nowadays. There are great supplements, those are covered in bacteria, so they colonize new bacteria real quick. I would love to create a reef edge in the middle of the tank. This always creates depth in comparison to a simple in the back rising reef structure. This hardscape doesn't have to look done and completed because the aesthetic is caused by the corals. Please always remember to not overuse rocks because you want to have free areas for corals and else. Sand is another very important point we have to talk about. Unless you want to keep animals which are hiding in the sand, then you need more sand of course. 5 to 10 kg of sand are more than enough for a tank just like that. Because this is live sand, which has always included some living biology, you have to add the water immediately. We use Tropic Marine Pro Reef as our water and will fill out the tank now. It is very important here to use osmosis water and never tap water if you're running a salt water tank. That just don't work. The next step and highly asked question is if corals can be added to the tank immediately. And the answer is yes, always. It is always great to immediately add customers that help to balance the nutrients and lowers the algae development. You don't have a break-in process of two weeks like back in the days. We are trying to be as sustainable as possible, so we will focus on bread corals. Ideally, those corals were bred in Germany, some in private homes and some by breeders like Jürgen Wendel. I already visited him before, so now we add the corals, we'll glue some of them and others not, because it depends on the coral species. For example, never glue an anemone, but with a gorgonian or a leather coral, you will not get any problems. Always wash your hands before reaching into the aquarium to avoid getting lotion and else in the tank. Now let's check out the cleaning crew. The cleaning crew discusses algae and pests in the break-in phase of your saltwater tank. Personally, I am a big fan of hermits. Unfortunately, they are only available as wild catchers. But those few caught hermits do not harm the ecosystem. Algae snails are another important member of the cleaning crew. Only put them in when there are actually algae, because they need something to eat. And the last points are fish. We will wait to get fishes about two weeks. Like in any freshwater tank, ammonia can build and we need to give the tank time to biologically set in. But important, the fish stock will include only breedings. If you want to have some more information about that breeding fish topic, please check out my video in the video description. Okay, now our tank setup is done and the first corals open up, which is a great sign. There will be no separate supply system, but calcium, magnesium and other elements will be filtered by the corals and added through the water changes. I will make a weekly water change of around about 10% to establish a regularity. If you realize over time that the consumption is too high, you could think about getting a supply system. For beginners I would recommend the Tropic Marine or for reefs for example, because the handling is very easy and it's all in one. For this tank we spent around about 850 euros, but important without corals and without the cleaning crew. I hope this video has helped you a bit. If you have any questions just write them down in the comments below and it would be awesome to see you again next week. Feel free to like the video, subscribe to that channel and have a nice week.